Welcome to the Hashkey Learn video series. I'm Jason, and today I'm once again joined by my colleague, Henry Santiero, Senior Research Manager at Hashkey Capital. This is episode two of Hashkey Learn. So in episode one, we talked about privacy smart contract networks. If you haven't watched that, be sure to check it out. And today we will be talking about Ethereum upgrade. So Henry just released a report titled Ethereum upgrade, what's changing and why does it matter? Now today, so we are going to have a very high level discussion about, you know, what does the Ethereum upgrade mean to the crypto community and the different stages of this upgrade. So Henry, once again, thank you for joining us. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. So at the very beginning of the report, you implied that the Ethereum upgrades might be the most important and impactful event since DeFi summer and the NFT boom. That's, uh, that's quite a grandiose statement. <laughs> so um, why do you think the Ethereum upgrade is something um, we should care about? And what does it mean so much to uh, the crypto community? Yeah, that's a great question. So the Ethereum network is at the moment the one with the biggest adoption in terms of number of active users and active wallets. There are at the moment over 30 million active wallets uh, using Ethereum network mm. and being MetaMask the most a popular wallet and the upcoming upgrades are going to impact basically millions and millions of people and they are going to solve some of the big issues that the Ethereum network has at the moment uh, and some of these issues are in terms of the energy efficiency the scalability security not that Ethereum is unsecure at the moment but it will improve even more the security so the impact is going to be for a very large user base and will also invite new users to the network, users or investors that may have ESG concerns, uh, environmental concerns, because moving to proof of work is going to be much more energy efficient. Now you talked about shard chains, which we'll, get, we'll, we'll uh, get into that later. One of the biggest debates in the crypto community is proof of stake versus proof of work. You know, which one is regarded as the better uh, consensus mechanism? What, what do you make of that debate? Well, th that's a great debate. Most of the first generation blockchains like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and even Ethereum nowadays are proof of work. Yep. And proof of work is extremely resilient and secure. The Bitcoin blockchain was never hacked until now and is very, very decentralized and very resistant to attacks. Mm. Uh, on the other hand, is also very energy intensive. Of course, this energy has a very good use. There is an amazing use case, which is to keep these large decentralized networks that allow people to transact between each other alive. But people have these uh, ESG and uh, environmental concerns. Yep. On the other hand, proof of stake is now a bit more mature. So a few years ago, there was reasonable concerns that proof of stake was not uh, secure enough, or at least not as secure as proof of work. But nowadays, proof of stake has evolved, and the mechanisms behind proof of stake, some of these proof of stake blockchains, including the mechanisms that are going to be implemented uh, on the Ethereum network after the merge, are very secure indeed, and um, and I would say that there are no con security concerns concerning mm -hmm. uh, the the proof of stake in the future. It's going to be very decentralized. The incentive mechanisms for validators to do a good job uh, is very reliable. If eventually validators do a bad job, part of their stake uh, is slashed, yep. so validators have an incentive to do a good job and not attack the network. So I think uh, it's going to be quite uh, smooth to transit uh, from uh, Ethereum proof of work to proof of stake. Now, Henry, I guess the major difference that the Ethereum upgrades will bring is its transition from proof of work to proof of stake. Now, apart from that, what are some other differences between Ethereum 1 and 2? Can you give us a very general overview before we dive into the individual phases? Yeah, sure. That's an important question. So it's very important to say that from a user perspective, there are no differences at all. So for normal users, people that are interacting with DeFi protocols, buying NFTs or sending Ether or tokens back and forth, 
there are no differences at all. Mm. And we usually call, uh, call it Ethereum, Ether 1 or Ether 2, ETH 1, ETH yeah. 2, but it, it's exactly the same. There are no two different uh, Ether, there are two, no two different uh, tokens, it's all the same. So from a user perspective, it's really going to be the same. Uh, but under the hood, uh, we have this transition from proof of work to proof of stake, which is already uh, happening with the beacon chain. The beacon chain is the consensus layer that is already live uh, in proof of stake. But the Ethereum that we use nowadays is continues to be uh, proof of work. So these two are going to merge, making Ethereum a fully proof of stake, and which is going to save a lot of energy. Uh, and it will also uh, bring additional rewards to people mm. that have Ether and are willing to stake this Ether in order to protect the network by being a validator. So these are the main differences, but from the user perspective, it will be exactly the same. Now, I know that there's three phases entire, uh, if in, in, in the whole Ethereum upgrade. Can you tell us what they are again? Yeah, sure. So the three phases are the beacon chain, which mm. is already live, the merge and the shard chains, which is going to be sometime 2023. So let's talk about uh, the beacon chain. The beacon yeah. chain has been live since December 2020. Yep. Okay. Can you tell us more about you know what exactly is the beacon chain? You know what did uh, users have to do in order to make the beacon chain happen at that time? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the beacon chain is a proof of stake Ethereum chain, and it only runs uh, the consensus layer. So it's already live since uh, December 2020, mm. uh, like you said. And it's basically an Ethereum blockchain that is running only the consensus layer. Yeah. So at the moment, there are no transactions, no execution layer. You only have the validators producing, most of the times, empty blocks of data. But the main goal of the beacon chain uh, since its inception is to test that proof of stake works and to bring uh, new validators on board yeah. so that we can merge uh, the beacon chain, the proof of stake chain with the current uh, Ethereum chain. So beacon chain is basically the very first phase of this cut this transition to proof of stake. You no know, staking is already available right now. Can you tell us can you tell us a bit more about how staking currently works on uh, if, uh, on Ethereum, what is the APY like? How many validators are there right now? Yeah, these are very exciting times for the Ethereum network. At the moment, over 12 million ETH are staked in the beacon chain, which represents close to 10% of the total ETH in, mm -hmm. in circulation. And this represents around 300, 390,000 validators. It's a yeah. huge number. And does that make Ethereum the most decentralized uh, blockchain out there as well? Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, the uh, most decentralized, in terms of node counts, blockchain before this, uh, it was, you know what blockchain? We talked about it uh, recently. Uh, is it Solana? Uh, Horizon. Horizon. So oh, sorry. Horizon, although it's not a big blockchain in terms of market cap, they have like 30 something thousand validators, mm -hmm. which is very impressive. Uh, and the Ethereum blockchain now with the Bitcoin chain is the biggest or most decentralized blockchain, at, at least in terms of node count. Okay. At the moment, 390,000. So it's very impressive to see um, a blockchain that is not even 100% yet proof of stake is already the biggest proof of stake yep. in the most decentralized network. And the amount that is staked on the Ethereum blockchain is already bigger than the, sec the second uh, biggest proof of stake blockchain, which is Solana in terms of market cap. Now, the next phase of the upgrades is the merge. You've been talking about the merge a lot. What is the merge, Henry? Right. So the merge is the moment when uh, the current beacon chain, the proof of stake chain, will merge with the existing uh, Ethereum blockchain, making Ethereum fully proof of stake. So at the moment, uh, the main Ethereum mainnet is running on proof of work, beacon chain is moving, uh, running on proof of stake, and once they meet together, it will become 100% only uh, proof of stake. Uh, so that's uh, what the merge is. 
uh, there will be some interesting advantages, especially for the validators. Now, back in 2021, I think most people were referring to these upgrades as Ethereum 2.0. But right now, we haven't seen much of the mention of the words Ethereum 2.0. Why, why is it that the developers decide to completely replace the term Ethereum 2.0? Yeah, that was generating a little bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also, the developers were concerned that uh, scammers could take advantage of that because it may generate confusion and people could believe that each one ETH2, Ethereum 2.0 are two different cryptocurrencies when they are not two different cryptocurrencies. Okay. So scammers could eventually take advantage uh, and try to scam people to send them their uh, Ethereum 2.0 to send back the Ethereum 2.2, 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to avoid any confusion, uh, they decided to eliminate the, uh, that terminology. Okay. And the final phase is shard chains. What are shard chains? Okay, shard chains are the scalability solution for the Ethereum network. At the moment, the Ethereum network can only handle around 15 transactions per second, which is not that much. Mm. And that's the reason why sometimes the gas fees are so high, yep. because there is a lot of people trying to transact at the same time, and the blocks of uh, the Ethereum blockchain can only handle around 15 transactions per second. And the, re the, the way the Ethereum network have been uh, dealing with this is with side chains and rollups. So we have Arbitrum, Optimism, and other uh, uh, scaling solutions that have been uh, used. Yeah. But they are not like really the ideal because if you want to transact in these uh, layer two solutions, you need to bridge assets to them. So it's not like amazing from the user perspective. So what the shard chains are going to do is you will have uh, the Ethereum uh, the, the beacon chain, the, the consensus layer, yep. and you are going to have additional blockchains, basically, which is going to be a total of 64 that are run on in parallel, and they will communicate with the, with the main chain. You can see this, like, the best example is try to imagine an Excel spreadsheet, and instead of one spreadsheet, instead of one tab, you open more tabs. Okay. So you have more spreadsheets inside the same uh, Excel. Uh, and in this case, you are going to have 64 of them. Uh, the, the validators will be validating uh, all uh, these shard chains and which will allow to execute many transactions at the same time. Another good example could be, for example, a road. If you have a road with one single lane, you'll have a traffic jam. But if you have a highway, with 64 lanes, you can have really a lot of cars going on that highway. And that's what uh, shard chains are going to do. So ultimately, the goal of shard chains is to make Ethereum more scalable. Is it fair to say that? Yeah, more scalable. Uh, and as I said, like the current Ethereum mainnet can handle around 15 transactions per second. Mm -hmm. If you count with uh, the layer two solutions, can handle maybe a few thousand transactions per second. Mm -hmm but with shard chains can potentially handle up to 100,000 transactions per second. Now, there's lots of people in the uh, in the industry asking, you know, after the upgrades happen, will gas fees go down? Because gas fees is such a, you know, huge, um, hugely debatable, a hugely debated topic in, in, in the community, right? And the gas fees, you know, have been so expensive, you know, no matter if you do an NFT transaction or any type of transactions. Will gas fees go down after the upgrades or the upgrades doesn't really pose an, a, a, any specific effect on, on, mm -hmm. on the gas fees? Yeah, the gas fees are uh, really a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, they have, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um, depending on... Uh, how clogged the network is mm -hmm. sometimes can be even thousands of dollars. If the if, if the network doesn't have too many transactions, a normal uh, if you if you if you do a normal Ethereum transaction, sometimes you pay like a couple of dollars. And that's not too much. But for example, recently there was the uh, other size uh, Yuga Labs yep. uh, land sale. I was trying to check if I could eventually mint one NFT mm -hmm. for the other size yeah, land sale. And the gas fees were thousands of dollars, just in gas fees. Mm -hmm. It's totally crazy. 
Yeah. So uh, the merge itself is not going to solve the gas fees because the, the merge ma is mainly to change the consensus mechanism to proof of stake. The gas fees will be solved once we have uh, the shard chains implemented okay. next year. Now, Henry, I'd like to end our discussion talking about price, because that's what many people are mm -hmm. <laughs> concerned about. Um, you have a dedicated section in the report talking about uh, the price potential of Ethereum. Now, can you maybe share with us what do you think the major drivers are towards the future price of Ethereum? Yeah, uh, so I think we'll have very soon a few drivers that will drive probably the price up. Mm. Uh, one is the fact that the staking rewards will increase for the validators. So anyone can be a validator. Can be a validator. You and me, we can be validators if you have Ether. Yeah. Um, and you can, if you don't have the 32 ETH, the minimum to be a solo validator, you can use a, 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 st a staking pool. And at the moment, the rewards for validators are around 4%, but once the merge happens, these rewards may go up to 10%, which will make people to stake even more. It will be even more attractive to stake. And if at the moment we have close to 10% of the Ethereum supply staked, uh, we, if, if the staking reward is close to 10%, then we will have much more people staking, mm -hmm. which will remove Ether from the circulation supply. Okay. Many other proof of stake uh, blockchains have around like 50% of the circulating supply of their cryptocurrency yeah. staked, and this will be a huge driver for the price to okay. grow. So staking, okay. yeah. can you maybe name two more? Yeah, sure. Uh, then we have also the fact that uh, Ether, e Ethereum will become uh, more environmentally friendly okay. and institutional investors that have ESG concerns uh, will be able to come on board. Uh, so we have more investors buying uh, Ether. And uh, there is one other thing very important, which is the fact that at the moment, uh, Ether is inflationary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because we have proof of stake and Ether, the Ethereum network needs to compensate and reward the miners yeah. uh, that consume a lot of energy, they need to mint more Ether. So the block reward at the moment is like two ETH plus the, the fees, uh, the gas fees. Once we move to proof of stake, you don't need to spend so much ETH to reward the validators. So. Uh, the Ethereum network will become probably deflationary. So instead of having an inflation rate of close to 4%, the inflation rate may be actually uh, negative. So it may be deflationary, maybe half percent. Uh, and um, that's why people call Ethereum the ultrasound money, mm -hmm. is because it's going to be even more scarce and even more uh, deflationary, even when comparing to the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, and, and finally, I think the last thing is the network adoption and the market sentiment. I think the market sentiment towards yep. Ethereum is very positive. Now, no one can predict the price uh, in the future, but it's good to know that you know there are all of these drivers going on that you think that may help push the price of Ethereum forward. And I think that is about time that we end today's discussion. Now, if you haven't checked out the report, there, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link in the description below for you to read the full report. And there is a very, very interesting poem in the report that Henry has wrote, inspired by in, Imagine by John Lennon. <laughs> um, best thing I've read all month, so be sure to check that out as well. Uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for the next one. Thank you and take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.